Hello, we're Sorted Food. Welcome to Fridge Camp. And now, a while back, we asked Ben a very direct question, and he came up with a variety of answers. Okay, so we're going to talk about the perfect fried egg. Uh, Mike's here, I'm here. We're going to walk you through a couple of different versions, because basically, I don't think there's such a thing as the perfect fried egg. There's a perfect fried egg for a perfect situation, not one all-encompassing. So having tricked you in, we're now going to show you a few versions, and you can decide which one suits best for your dish. They all need nice fresh eggs, though. The fresher the egg, the tighter shape it will form in the pan, and it should be at room temperature. It will help you fry a better egg. So that's a good start. Beyond that, my personal favourite is a dirty egg. So after a full English breakfast, when you've been frying your bacon, your sausages and everything else in the pan, take that out, plate that up, that'll keep nice and warm, the sausage will keep warm for ages, then fry the egg. You get all the flavour from the bacon fat and the pork fat, but you might also get a few of the dirty bits. It's not the tiny It's bit. not great for presentation, but it's great for flavour, isn't it? Perfect for flavour. However, the first one I'm going to show you here is a cleaner egg, and I'm actually going to use olive oil. So this would be perfect if you are cooking something to go on top of a hash or some more or some chorizo, or on top of sort of a tapas -y dish. That said, it will add a bit of flavour with olive oil, but not too much flavour. So you could sub that out for a vegetable oil or a sunflower oil, but the key is, warm oil but not hot oil and a fresh egg just gets cracked into it and I don't want it to start spitting and spatting. The nice slow speed means you'll get a nice solid white but still a runny yolk but it's all of the same kind of texture whereas on this back pan I'm going to do another one at the same time, smaller pan, higher heat and I'm actually going to cook it in sesame oil. So this is perfect if you're putting it in fry on top of some fried rice or something like a bibimbap the sesame oil has an amazing flavour, so it's also adding flavour, and because it's a hotter pan, it should give us a crispy brown base to the egg, but still a runny yolk. Can I ask a question? Yes. That seems to be a lot of oil for me, so um, how much is it, and why have you used that amount? So you're frying an egg, so you do need the oil in there. However, the advantage of having more oil is that what I can do is, if you look, just kind of splash the hot oil over the top of the egg. And what that does, in America they would flip it. Yep. Uh, however, by doing this, you just begin to cook the very top of the yolk, but you've got enough to basically baste the egg. And that can come out there. So that's one fried egg. So as I crack it in here, you instantly get more of a sizzle. The sesame oil is gonna give it an amazing flavor. And I'm gonna make it a little bit thinner so I'm going to spread it out so that it goes nice and crispy. And you want to give this a good minute or two in this high temperature so those edges go crispy, but the yolk is still going to remain runny. If you want to flip it over, then that's how you'll cook out your egg. The last option isn't technically a fried egg because we're not going to use any fat. I've actually got a crepe pan and we're going to cook it, but the point is you can cook it without fat. It's just that it's technically more like a grilled egg because it's not meeting the definition of a fried egg. But if your pan is non-stick, you should be able to cook it with zero fat if you're looking for a healthier alternative. Not technically a fried egg, but it will look like it a fried It looks egg. like a fried egg and tastes a bit like a fried egg. Three, two, one. So if you're doing it on a flat top or a grill, you can flip it over or you can put a lid on top of it if you do just want to seal in that yolk a little bit more. This one. This is Sesame fried egg, yeah? Absolutely awesome, it's not like a bibimbap, that, but that's the crispy edges that you want and the flavour from the sesame oil. Yeah, the important thing is to get the white to set, but the yolk to still be runny. And you can do that because the white and the yolk set at different temperatures, 63 and 65 degrees Celsius, respectively. Wow. You even Science. know the temperatures. Science. <laughs> There's an over-easy egg there. A nice crispy base, but you've still got plenty of yolk. And this one, a much softer fry, but again, still with plenty of egg yolk. So I apologise if that was teaching you to suck eggs, because it is a very simple thing, but the point is, you personalise it to you and the dish you're cooking. Key things to remember, fresh eggs, eggs at room temperature, and nine times out of 10, it has to be fried in oil or fat. You choose the oil, and you can choose how hot it is. That will just depend on whether you get a crispy base, or not. While we've been talking about eggs, I've been name dropping a few recipes like bibimbap, a full English breakfast. We even did a ham roshti, which had a fried egg on top. 
Go and check those out on Sorted Food. Give them a search and you'll find plenty of other things too. Say what you like about Evers. I've never met anyone that's wound me up more. But he can deliver a recipe regardless of the circumstance. Any situation, he's great. So much so that we've delved inside his mind and pulled out all of the best bits just for you. We've created a workshop where Ben will take you by the hand and through his methodology for creating the perfect dinner party situation. He shows you how you can prep everything in advance, even months in advance, so that if people turn up unannounced, bang, you can put on an amazing experience. And we can personally attest to the fact that Ben knows what he's talking about because he is actually really, really good at this kind of stuff. Yeah, well, he's not here, so we're allowed to give him compliments, but if he was here, we'd be like, Ever shut up! There's loads of these workshops coming up. If you want to know more about it and what it is and why we're involved, I've written a blog, it's in the link downstairs. But in the meantime, make sure you like this video and subscribe and we'll see you on Sunday for Kitchen Gadget Testing. Lyrical. Click on the left if you missed our last video or click on the right video for one of our favorites.